Yeah, that is it. The good thing is that the diagram has been drawn and well labeled. So as we answer, we'll be referring to the different parts of the brake system. Now, um, describe how the system works. Five marks. <laughs> yeah. Mm, when yes. the brake pedal, when force is applied on the brake pedal, mm. it uh, pushes the piston in the master cylinder mm. towards uh, uh, towards the back, which uh, pushes the brake fluid. Mm. So what is it that pushes? You know, this it's five marks. That's why I was talking. I was loudly pronouncing that five marks because in order to get the five marks, there are certain keywords that you must use while answering this question. So like uh, you have pressed on the brake pedal. You have stepped on it. You have pushed the brake pedal. Of course, it has a piston, so it, that piston pushes the liquid. But there is a term. Actually, this is an area of application of pressure, remember. So what you are doing here, you exert force on the pedal. And that, because of that force, there is pressure produced. So when, you, when force is applied, actually we talk of when force is applied on the brake pedal, uh, pressure is exerted on the master cylinder. Yeah, the piston, this piston here, the piston uh, will exert pressure on the master cil uh, cylinder. I think you can now pick from there. So I wanted you to talk about the pressure here, pressure being exerted. So can you just begin, but now considering that there is force, and then that force produces pressure. And then what happens after that pressure has been exerted on the master cylinder? Yes. Uh, when force is uh, applied mm. on the brake pedal, mm. uh, uh, pressure is exerted on the master cylinder. Yes. Um, making it to push the brake fluid with the brake fluid which flows at a very high speed to the to actually the, the speed the speed doesn't even come in here so what we're interested in is pressure you produce pressure at the uh, on master cylinder and then that pressure is distributed uniformly to all the wheels. So it will be pushed to all the wheels. So, but in this particular diagram, you can see that, uh, okay, to other wheels, and then there is just this wheel now. So you can, once it has branched to this wheel, remember there's that pressure that was created, that was exerted at the master cylinder, and it has gone to this wheel here. So here there is wheel cylinder. So the pressure exerted at the master cylinder is distributed uniformly to all the wheels. And then at the wheel cylinder, you can see that pressure will push. What is this? You, you see there are some pistons here. So there is this piston due to the pressure that was exerted. So you can see it will be pushed. This side will also be pushed. So the brake shoe is pushed. Okay, you can now <laughs> just pick it from there. So what happens? Mm, the, the pressure and the fluid pushes the pistons in the wheel cylinder. Mm. Uh, with, uh, Which pushes the brake shoe? 
Yeah, which push, pushes the brake shoe and uh, making the brake shoe the will in turn push the brake linings or the brake lining towards the the rim actually though we don't have the rim so you know we have the rim so it touches yeah is it the, really the rim huh? what did it, what are we going to talk about here so where what does it push this brake lining to it, the brake so you have the return string, the return spring. See, the return okay. spring now, will. Now, what I'm talking about is, how does the vehicle stop, or what, what will? The purpose of exerting brake is to maybe reduce the speed of a vehicle. So, what is it that, up to the point we have reached, how is it that the vehicle will have its uh, speed reduced? I want you to, to talk about that in line with the brake shoe has been pushed and then it presses the brake lining on what? Mm, on the rim. On the rim. Yeah. So yeah. that way the speed of the car will reduce. So on withdrawal, upon withdrawal of the force, what happens? Mm. Uh, pressure uh, pressure reduces in the pressure reduces in the brake fluid, which uh, in turn mm. causes the pistons in the wheel cylinder mm. to return to its original position. Yeah. Yeah, so there's this brake brake spring, the, the return spring. So when when the force is withdrawn, yeah, the return the return spring will allow the brake shoe to return to its original position. Yeah, so just like that. Um, if you look at the marking scheme, what did they say? The driver applies a force. Actually, yeah. So you see. I was talking about force. So you, you talk about force. So you apply force. Those terms are very, very important. Don't just say when you pull, when you, 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 you press on the brake pedal. So when you exert force on it, then that force, everything causes another. Like that force that is exerted will transmit pressure. So the force transmits pressure on the master cylinder fluid. You see, you already have the two marks. But the, that mark, the first one comes with mentioning force is applied on the pedal. Then that force is consequential. In, it creates uh, some pressure. So it transmits pressure to the master cylinder. Then equal pressure is transmitted to all the wheels here. Yeah? Of course, yeah, all the wheels. That's Pascal's uh, principle of transmission of pressure causing the pistons of the wheel cylinder to push brake shoe. So that's the second, third mark. So we have now it has gone down to this point. So that force, then it transmits pressure to all the wheels. Then now you narrow down to what happens at every particular wheel. So there is the wheel cylinder. So the wheel cylinder there. So, uh, so we're talking of the pistons of the wheel cylinder will push the brake shoe. So what happens when they are pushed? They press the brake pads. So this guy, uh, I think we better, in a, in a case like this, just refer to the diagram as it is. Because I mean, you may not even know, uh, some students have never seen, okay, they have seen cars, but they have never gone that close to the car. Or, or maybe you could even be having a car. Some people have cars, but they don't even know what brake pad is. When there's a problem, they take it to a mechanic and it's fixed. So just, re, just re, to be remain relevant, you just use the diagram as it is, because this tells you how the brake looks like, the braking system looks like. So I don't have to cram anything because they're displayed. Yes, I'll just explain this using what is labeled. So I'm given brake shoe. 
there's a piston here, there's a piston here. So the pressure will push those pistons and then, yeah, the brake shoe will push the brake climbing, which this guy, okay, he has now decided to use the brake pads. Yeah, so pressing the brake pads, uh, that in turn press the wheel, yeah, reducing its rotation. So as we chose, you can use the wheel, because some also don't know what the rim is. So you can just generalize and talk about the wheel. So pressing the brake pads, actually, so in that diagram, we could refer to what was labeled as the brake um, linings, yeah. So the brake linings will will press the wheel reducing its rotation so when the force is with the drone <laughs> not removed when the force is with the drone the return spring pulls back the shoe and the pistons to the original position you get your five marks okay yeah, I think that was a good question. And the fact that the diagram is drawn makes it a very good one because you're not required to cram. And that is the direction.